In this video, we're going to look at this Stripe website, how to set up an account, how to get things going over in Bubble with your account so that the two are connected, so that Bubble can process payments using Stripe connected to your bank account. Let's get started. First, navigate to stripe.com and then click sign in. You'll want to sign up for an account and after you do that, basically, you know, email, password, all pretty standard stuff. Once you do that, you will be directed into an account that looks like this. You have an option to activate it. We're not going to do that this, just yet. I'll walk you through that in this course of what you need for that. But for the purposes of right this moment, what we want to do is actually navigate over here to developers and API keys here on the left. So uh, notice this toggle here, it's an important point. We have to activate it to get live data. Bubble, um, we'll see in a moment, has two areas. Let's go ahead and navigate to the Bubble plugin area and I will show off what I mean by these two areas in Bubble. So we're going to grab this stripe.js2 and you can see 13,000 apps, Copilot, fantastic. Uh, development group out here in the Bubble e ecosystem. Uh, go ahead and install that and let's take a look at what we have here. So they have a couple of options here, a Stripe publishable key, a Stripe secret key, dev dev. That is actually what we're looking at when we're looking at these keys. So I'm going to go ahead and click copy here for this publishable key paste that in and then I am going to grab this test key copy that paste that in here and we'll be doing the same things once we verified the account again like I said notice this toggle switch we have to go and activate our account before we can put these values into um, this live area but notice that we've been working in this uh, development version all this whole course we actually have never even pushed our app live so bubble is smart and knows that when we're in development it uses these keys to process test payments and it will use the live ones once we've activated our account and pushed our bubble app live so we are all set up then with our keys to begin work on our page let's navigate to this mobile payments page and we'll go ahead and like we normally do We'll bring it down to 320. We will not make it fixed width. And the minimum width, we're just going to say at least 99. And we'll just allow it to expand out as needed. That's fine. Uh, 121212 has been the background color that we're, we've been working with. And yeah, with that all set up, then next, let's go ahead and grab a group, drop that onto the page, and zero that one out. And then, I don't know, make it yay big. Looks good. And then apply a max width on this one. This is going to control, and then put 200 for the maximum width. This is going to control all of the uh, responsiveness for the purposes of what we're going to do here. So let's call this the payments page. And then let's go ahead and make life easy on ourselves a little bit by doing some copy and paste work. So over here in... Let's see, how about this favorites one? Yep, so let's just grab these two, paste those in, and nudge those into place. And then let's grab a group here and we'll remove the style background we'll give it a flat color of white and then let's go with 280 go ahead and center that horizontally give it a roundness of 10 and okay we're looking like we've got a bit of a form up here actually so what we want this one to say is um, credit card and this is really really strong I want to go with uh, how about Leto 
700 here. Like it, okay. Um, so when, when we installed that um, plugin, it gives us access to some of these Stripe things here. Grab the Stripe element, drag that onto the page, and let's go with, we need it to be, we need it to be at least 261 wide to get some uh, special features. This is an automatically generated Stripe element, but uh, with that width, we get some nice icons that show card things. So let's go ahead and just update this. Let's see how we're looking. Yeah, so check that out. So we've got a card number thing here, and let's go ahead and make this a height of 40. And I've got this one at a ask postal code. We're going to say no. Disabled, no. And we've got to add a Y value of 14 just because of how some of the spacing goes. But let's see how this is looking. Okay. Uh, let's see. That's 23. I think I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 with a 10 distance. I'm just going to say card information because it might be a debit card all right so let's grab that card information and then let's plop that down here and we're going to say card card holder name and we are going to insert two fields so grab on the input forms just an input line and let's remove the styling here but we'll start with 130 we'll do it by 40 and what have we got here for a uh, yeah we're gonna just take that same color uh, no borders horizontal padding of 10 that looks fine we're gonna have this be Leto uh, let's say 14 and that 2525 Go up to this stripe element and go ahead. Yeah, that's Leto 14 as well. Okay, cool. So we're looking good here. Um, the placeholder, we're going to say first name. And elements visible upon page load does not need to be fixed with, say, 200 here. And then I think that's looking pretty good. Placeholder color, let's go black. And then now with that style, let's go ahead and paste it over here. So this will be first name, last name. So this allows us you know, to have the, the card holder's name, the process card, but it's also great because we can intake this information, use it in emails like, hey, John, or hey, Susan, um, things like that. So that's 18. Let's go ahead and move this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight up. So we've got a 10 pixel thing there. And then let's see how we're looking here. All right, looks like this can come up. And yeah, so we've got the start of what we're going after here. And then let's, let's see, the distance between these ones is 30. So here we're looking at 30 as well. All right, so let's say subscription details. And then grab this. And what we'll do here, actually, I think we want it just a 10 difference there. We'll grab the style here. We'll just say body. Then we'll remove that style immediately. And we'll get it to Leto. And I think we'll want something like 12, perhaps. And a much lighter lighter color here uh, let's say 13 okay so subscription details what we want to say is yoga class subscription uh, or call it whatever you would you would want uh, and then we'll grab the same exact thing put that on top of there make sure it's centered and then we will align the text on this one to the right and then we'll just drop in a price for this one say $19.99 per month 
and then we'll say center this one horizontally let's see I want this to be at 20 and I want this one yep that looks right let's see how we're looking here so subscription details probably want this one to say something like uh, receipt email and this is uh, what we'll do we don't actually know the current users um, email address we have to go and grab it from this user ID we just know we're dealing with this user so what we want to do I think we're gonna make this text C2 a little bit darker B then I'll click send that to back so we can update the other ones since we have two here and then update this one as well alright so what I want to say here I want to say um, Actually, I want to say this. When the page loads, so general, when the page is loaded, here's an action to do. We're going to do element action, set a state, and we'll just set it on the um, group payments page. Is that our main group? Yes, it is. Okay, so with that set up, we'll create a custom state and we will call it the uh, user email. We'll just set it as a text and we'll look for, we'll do a search for a user where the unique ID, and this is where we'll use that value, we'll get data from the page URL. And this is a fancy thing that if you ever see things happening in URLs, it's things like this on the back end. We're grabbing that UID and then we're saying when it's equal to that, that's our user. That's how we found our user. Okay, and this returns a list of users, so just and it's a list of one. So we just grab the first item. And then we want to grab this person's email address. So now we've stored that value into here. So this group payments page user email is actually usable on the page. So we can clear that expression. And then we can go and get, uh, it's under this group payments page. It's got this state in it. So let's take a look at that. And then we'll call it good for this video. Yeah, so we have a card number here that we can just start entering in, to, in stuff. And we can enter in a first name and a last name. Yoga class subscription. The receipt email is going to be sent to this email, which we know their email because they've signed up to our application. And then we'll have a button where people can start that subscription. Welcome back to this next video where we're going to finish off our payments module or our payments flow. What we're going to do is we're going to add a button and that button is going to have a bunch of workflows tied to it where it will uh, create a customer in our Stripe account, uh, charge that customer, subscribe them. Um, you know, you'll be given the opportunity to decide if you want to give someone a seven day trial, a 14 day trial, no trial, just have them sign up directly. Um, your call, you will have control over this and I'll point out, you know, where, where you would update that setting uh, here in the video. So why don't we go ahead and get started by just adding a button and we'll go ahead and just remove the style on that and then get it going, you know, with one of our more normal styles using our Leto font. 14 looks good. Not a fan of the huge letter spacing personally, but let's go ahead and say get full access now and let's bump that up to 16 do we want to make it bold sure and then let's go around this of 10 because I like the way that looks 35 34 on our uh, spacing here looks good to me I'm just gonna net, uh, pull this down a little bit and then let's go ahead we're gonna add this visual element of an image here at this at the bottom and we're gonna upload this Powered by Stripe 150 thing included with the pack of stuff. And we're gonna put that at 90 by 12. 
and we'll just go ahead and center that horizontal, center it horizontally. And that looks that all looks pretty good to me. Uh, what do we got for distance here? 47. Let's bring it up a little bit, roughly in line with that. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, the latest here. And just a reminder, uh, here's what our URL looks like. I know the video doesn't show this, um, but basically we have this UID on there that uh, is, you know, getting pulled down. And when the page loads, and we're going, it's going to find the, or it goes and finds the user. And uh, by finding the user, it is able to locate that email address and give us more information. So that's wonderful. Um, oh yeah, one thing we want to do for this, we want to make sure that it's not fixed with, and we want to let, allow this to be 200, let's say 280 for this, and then just center that to wrap up our user interface here. And we're going to talk about, uh, we want to make this one fixed with, see that it's not. And okay, so this is going to be our UI, and let's go ahead and get things started in our workflow. Basically, you know, right? Someone can fill all the things out, but let's get it going where they click this and stuff happens. Okay, so when the page is loaded, uh, we've got this set state thing, and I'm actually I'm gonna go ahead and make another one because I like the uh, setup here. This group payments page, user email, user ID, uh, text, great, and then the value. We're actually gonna take this one, copy that, so then we're only looking for up these things only one time. So paste that expression, the value is this get ID from the page URL. We'll actually use that here in a thing, in a moment. Um, so get this get full access now, we're gonna click start. And then what we are going to do is we are gonna look for a thing called payment method. And list of all customers. Um, Let's look for create. Transfer external account. Ah, you know what? It's actually under something different. It is under create payment method with Stripe element. So this is this one there because we have this element on the page, this one here, it gives us access to uh, this other this element actions workflow. It's not under plugins as I thought. Uh, okay, so that is going to create a payment method. And actually, one thing that we want to do is we want to well, we'll allow that to happen. We'll allow this to happen, and then we'll come back. And so now under elements. Uh, we want when a successful uh, a Stripe element payment was created, we want stuff to happen. So this will create it, and then when that happens, because basically this goes out, talks to Stripe, and while it's having that conversation, you know we don't know what's going on, so we're not going to run any other workflows just yet. And then we'll get notified. Stripe will tell you know be like, hey, we've got this payment thing. Do you want to use it? And yes, we do. So I'm going to go ahead, and I am actually going to workflow. Uh, Keller event, I'm going to call this one green because this is the stuff that happens when it comes back as successful because you can imagine a scenario where someone types in a, their credit card here, here and that, uh, you know, they use an invalid card or they have a typo and, uh, you know, we don't know what their card number is, right? Only they do and if they typo it, then we get a, a invalid payment. We need to do something with that. So actually, let's go ahead and create the other side of this. So when a Stripe element payment couldn't be created, and then we'll, we're not going to do anything with that yet, but we're going to mark it red. So cool. All right. Um, one thing that we want to do while this is all going on, I'm going to navigate to our mobile, our normal mobile app here that we have, and I'm going to look for this. Uh, I think it's the plans area has this unjoin a plan uh, thing. I'm going to grab that and then copy it. Head over back to the payments. And then I'm going to paste this in here. Okay, why am I doing that? Well, uh, this looks pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to delete out these things. And I'm going to grab one of these. Uh, actually, first and foremost, I'm going to paste it here, bring it down to size, and then drop it in here. 
Okay. So we're going to say processing payment. So we're creating a little pop-up that uh, the users will see that when it's loading, they'll be given something to look at. <laughs> so he, over here on visual elements, grab this regular icon one. Don't use the material icon one because there's just not the option to uh, have what I'll show in a second here. So we're looking for kind of a circular thing. This, okay, uh, I like it. Make the icon rotate and then remove the styling on this one here because we're going to uh, give it a special color. And that is 373737. And then we're going to go 50 by 30. Maybe say 32. All right, center that horizontally. Looks pretty good. And then uh, why not? We'll just add the same. We're just going to do a control C there and control V. Just giving someone something to kind of look at and just have a, a nice experience as they're chilling, chilling out. Um, I'm going to put this at 25. That's 37 there, and that's 44. Yeah, why not just go center horizontally and center vertically on this one? Okay, good enough. All right, so processing payment. So this thing, we're going to call this one a payment group payment processing. And you can see where this is going, where we are going to show this. So over here, uh, actually, we're going to insert an action. And element actions, we're going to click show. And then we're going to show this newly created element, group payment processing. OK, so while it's doing that, uh, basically, we've got our UI down that when someone clicks this, payment is processing. Oh, okay, so it looks like we need to uh, maybe have that as centered. Uh, fix width, perhaps. Make sure it's centered horizontally. Let's go ahead and make this one fixed width. Or let's at least, no, let's just, uh, let's go like 140 for that. Fix width there, fix width here. Okay, cool. You know, there's a lot that goes into this, uh, having your UI correct, as well as having kind of the piping and the plumbing in the back end of your app working, right? So, um, sure, at this point, you know, none of us are any strangers to this. Okay, so let's go ahead now, and we are going to search for create customer here over in Stripe. And what are we gonna do? Well, we are going to insert the name from input first name, value, and then click into here, hit space, and then insert another value, the last name. And then for the email address, we've actually already got that here on the groups payments page, user email. Okay, so this is uh, just some, you know, Stripe when they're processing your credit card, uh, if they have the person's name and the email address, then they can, uh, you know, this is none of this is uh, actually required, but they can, you know, better process things so that they uh, can detect any fraud. All right, so next up, we want to do a thing called attach, so payment method. So this, you know, this one went out to create a payment method, which uh, has to do with this thing, uh, where they, their card number is what they're gonna use for their payment. So, but uh, here in our plumbing of stuff, we have to actually go and attach that. So uh, what you wanna do is go to Stripe Element A's payment method ID. So that defines that, and the customer ID is gonna be the result of step one, here where we created this. So we know that this one will not run until this one you know, is successful, so that's a good kind of daisy chain thing happening there. And then we're gonna do this thing where we're going to go update, and we're gonna update a payment method, and the attaching and the updating is just a slightly different thing. So this payment method ID, we're going to go from a result from step two, that kind of daisy change things, so that way this one won't run until this one is completed, which is good. And then, uh, let's see. Ah, no, 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 sorry. It is not, uh, I did the wrong one. Update uh, customer. We want this payment method ID, that's the one from step two, to be here because this default thing, this means that we're 
now that we've attached this payment ID, we're just defining it as the default. And so then grab the customer ID here from result of step one. And basically, this means that this customer uses this payment, here's their default payment, and with all of that set up, now we can go and search for subscription here and hit create. So we're gonna create a subscription at last, which is great because this is how you'll get paid. Um, price ID, this is a very important point. This is where uh, back over here in our, our Stripe account, you the dashboard that you'll have, because we have not activated our account yet, if you're following along exactly with the course, and then go ahead and navigate to here to products and then click add products. All right, so this name of this thing, what products, uh, this is visible to people on a number of things. So you might wanna put your brand. So let's say Yoga Flow app subscription, subscription. And then this is just an optional description here if you wanted to add additional information, but uh, you know, not, not, not required. Standard pricing is what we want here. And then this is where you can choose. Do you want to charge $12.99? Do you want to charge $14.99? Do you want to charge uh, $19.99, $29.99? Uh, whatever you think is a fair price for your service, this is where you define it. And again, you know, we're in the development world. This is test data. We're going to do this again in a, in a future video to completely define it. But basically, um, you know, we're getting all set up with uh, being able to test it and just ensure that everything's working properly prior to making live payments with real credit cards. So this up under pricing here, copy this price ID and then paste this over into uh, here, just the control V, control V, yep. Okay, and then this is your opportunity here. Oh yeah, for quantity, make sure this is required field, make sure you hit one. For trial date, if you do want to have one, what I suggest doing is going to current date and time, and then however you long you want that to be, whether for one month or a certain amount of days, if you did one month, you would do like that. Uh, since I, on the button I put 14 days, we're gonna go days here, and then four, uh, 14. Uh, but actually, I'm gonna leave this blank for one test, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna look at it differently. Uh, the payment method, none of this, if we don't send anything, then it won't be defined or, or overwritten. Um, but basically, yeah, charge automatically, all this stuff. The payment method ID is already associated with this customer, so we're good. Okay, and then next up, under data, go ahead and make changes to a thing. And this is, uh, we're making a ton of progress, right? In this video, I know we're down in the weeds, but we are really uh, dealing with the guts of creating this payment workflow so that you're able to accept payments and your app um, you know, you only got to do this once and then years from now, you know, you can still be getting paid to the bank account that you define in your Stripe account. <laughs> Isn't that exciting, right? So, okay, uh, so we're going to make changes to a thing. The thing we're going to make changes to, we don't know the current user. We're going to do a search for a user where the unique ID is equal to the group payments page user ID. All right, so now we found the user that we're working with. Uh, it returns a list of one. So we'll just grab the first item. And then we need to head over to our data area here, to our data types here for user. We have paid subscription. We'll update that that you know now if they're gonna be paying. But we also want to update some other things, like we'll call it the Stripe customer ID. That'll be a text, and then the Stripe subscription, subscription ID that will also be attached text. Because then, you know, if someone ever wants to cancel a subscri subscription, what, you know, how do we go and find that? So basically here, let's start with paid subscription. Now they are at a yes. And then if they, uh, remember, this is like, you know, their payment method worked. And then we created a customer for them. So if their payment method worked, then all this stuff is going to happen. It means they're, you're getting, they've started a subscription and, or at least, you know, the trial and you're, you know, starting to get paid, uh, assuming you know they pass the trial date, for the free trial date. So the customer ID, go ahead and take the result of step one customer ID, and then the subscription ID, take the result of, I think it's uh, step four. Yep, subscription ID. And then what other things might we wanna change? You know what? We don't actually have, under our user, we don't have anything for first or last name. I mean, maybe you wanna email people, 
So we're going to say first name as a text, last name as a text, and then we'll just, you know, for good measure, we'll put their full name in in case there's ever any reason that uh, we would want to just have that information available to us. Uh, so here in our workflow, we're going to go look for first name and then input first name's value. And then last here, we'll go last name and then last name, input last name's value and then full name. And so here we'll want the first name value. And then I like to click out of it just to make sure I got my cursor right, hit space, and then a new dynamic, <coughs> excuse me, data. And we'll look for last name and that value. So we know we've got first name, space, last name. Cool. Um, what's up, what's up, what's up? All right, we've got that all set up then. And now, basically, we've ran all the piping. We just need to return quickly to the UI, and then uh, we'll be done with this section for creating subscriptions. All right, so what do we want to have happen? Well, we're going to want to hide the processing thing because we're no longer doing that. And we'll go ahead and hide the, uh, the payments page, and then we'll show a confirmation page. So this payment one, we don't need that. And we have not created a confirmation page yet. Uh, we'll create that in the next video, and then we'll also handle the you know what would happen if like somebody again like they have a typo on the card like we need to just have a user interface that shows them something so in the next video we'll tackle that as well let's finish off our payments flow nice work by the way for getting this far in this module i know the last video was a big one this one we don't have as much to do so great news there so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and grab this payments page and just do a copy paste and then hide everything except for the one that says copy. And then we'll call this uh, group payment success. And we'll go ahead and zero that out, zero, zero. And then we'll just, you know, start deleting all a bunch of stuff here. Uh, basically, yeah, everything except for this. So we've got a piece of text. We've got this thing, we'll just say success. And then, uh, here, what do we got? Um, 33. We'll just go all the way down to here to 40. 140. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. And then for this text here, I've just got some text here to copy. And we're just going to paste this in here. I clear that expression out and paste that. Okay, so thank you for subscription. You can say whatever you want here, obviously. Please navigate back to the app where you have full access to all classes. You can manage your subscription anytime through the link in your profile page, which we'll build later on. So that's it. Um, we can now add this as a step to show this element and group payment success. So why not, why not uh, go ahead and test this? Let's see it in action. And then with that confirmed, Oh yeah, that's a great thing to notice, that we do not want this to show on page load. We don't really want any conditionals, we'll just use the workflow to handle that. But basically, if I click that, processing payment, uh, we still have the case, oh yeah, that was silly, because we still have the case where it's not going to work. But basically, okay, so here's the thing when you're doing testing, start with four, and then just do four, two, four, two, four, two, and in the development world of Stripe, it just knows to accept that as a valid card. So, and we're going to say uh, first uh, test and last test, and then let's go ahead and get full access. So we can see it is showing our process payment loading thing, and it's communicating with Stripe. The real thing that's happening, this is just a user interface thing. The real thing is this loading bar actually is going out talking with Stripe servers. Okay, success. So we can see your subscription is created. Now, let's go back to our Stripe dashboard. Let's actually look at our customers. So here it is. So we got first, this first test, last test, this yoga test for the person. We can see that uh, they had this payment method, which is what they would have filled out there, right? Um, on, well, <laughs> that card thing. And 
we can see that there's a sub successful subscription created. Okay, and it succeeded. The payment is complete, which uh, I want to point out that in the last video, we left something off for this trial date. I'm gonna, now I'm going to go and return to this, and I'm going to say current date, and then I'm going to put uh, the number of days, and then add 14 here just so we can see a difference. So, uh, you know, this payment succeeded because it charged the payment right away, which uh, is what I just wanted to show off, that basically we've got this thing working. So now if you head over to more and subscriptions, you'll want to check this, you'll really do. You want to test, verify that this, is, that this is what's happening in your Stripe dashboard because your Stripe dashboard determines this is real life stuff of if you're getting paid or not, you know, into your bank account, uh, important details, right? So. Okay, so this, uh, what I just did is I navigated over here to subscriptions, and then we can see that, yeah, we have the subscription is active, uh, nothing that is scheduled, just an active one that we just created with this person, this customer, and their billing method is the default one, which uh, is that card, and they are charged to this at uh, $20 a month. So, cool. Uh, all right, let's go ahead, let's actually run that one more time. And we're going to take a look at the same thing. Uh, we're going to update their name. So I'm going to just call this one uh, John Doe. And what we should see as a difference now, if I refresh this uh, dashboard page with our customers. Here's John Doe with this yoga test. Their card is here. Their trial ends on uh, December 15th, 14 days from you know the day is being recorded. The, let's see, um, if we head on over to the subscriptions area, we can see, yeah, okay, so our current subscription, we have, this person is subscribed on a trial, their current period is until December 15th, and then um, they will be charged this amount in 13 days from now, or, well, I don't, you know, they must time their counter somehow. But anyways, uh, what we got then is this invoice, uh, basically it created a zero one just to show that it could charge their card. Uh, but yeah, that's what's, uh, that's what's happening when you create just a kind of a look behind the scenes. I know not, not super, uh, you know, um, directional in terms of us making progress, but something good to just know about that um, this setting on this Stripe create thing, this is where you set your trial. And you know, back over here under products, under this, this is where you set your price. If you ever wanted to, uh, let's see, edit it. Oh, it looks like you can't edit it after you've created it. You'd have to. Um, so you can only add a description link because price is used in a transaction. Okay, so it's like an already active thing. Okay, so uh, but let's move on with our story to. Uh, handle things when things don't go right, when they have perhaps a payment that, um, a, a, like a credit card that, that just doesn't go through. So we're going to call this one group uh, failed payment. And we're just going to say, you can say whatever you want, I'm just going to say uh oh. And then I'm going to change this icon to just like an exclamation thing. And I'm going to bring that up a little bit. And then we're here on our success page. I'm just going to grab this and pull that out here so I can access it. And let's go ahead and just uh, bring it down small. Put it on to, what are we trying to do? This one. Uh, no, we don't want that one. We'll just want like a button that says close. So what do we want to say here? Um, there was an issue processing your payment. Oh, there's an issue processing your car, let's say. Please try again. And then let's go ahead and make that one like that. Say we'll make it size 12. Bring that down a little bit and center this horizontally and then let's get a button on here. This button we're just going to say close 
going to grab this same gray color from here and drop it into this background for this button. Remove the styling to do that. And so we got a close button now. It's a little big, it seems like, but. All right. Keep it with our design of Leto. And. Okay, looking good. Just double check, everything is centered horizontally. I don't think I really want this one to be fixed width. Well, it's gonna, it has a max of 100, that's fine. Um, make that one fixed width as well. Okay. So, uh, what needs to happen here, when this button, we're gonna close it, all we're gonna do here is we're just gonna hide this group because we want the person to return to uh, the page that I'll call this field payment. That's more clear. Okay. Uh, so over here on this, if if so, if they if they fill out the card and then they click the button to you know uh, start off the payment process, and then Stripe is like, no, nah, that that's not a good card. Like, didn't work for us. Uh, what do we want to have happen? Well, we want to show the group failed payment. And let's go ahead and hide because it gets kicked off here, the show group payment processing. We'll hide that element of the processing one here. Okay, so let's go and purposefully put in a wrong payment and we'll see that we're doing good. So the user could be typing something in. Now, Stripe has its own kind of like validation, uh, visual validation. It's actually, it's only visual. Like you could still punch this in and that's why we've created our own UI to handle this extra case, right? So uh, with this showing up, basically we can see, okay, the person can't get past this and they get this nice notification about, let's see, I'm gonna just make that fixed with. They get this nice notification about not being able to, uh, you know. Hmm. That's interesting. It's completely empty. Uh, let's see. Well, let's go back to our story here of this. And yeah, so perfect. We've got this nice thing that tells people that their payment has failed. And then I'll address the, you know, scenario where if they don't fill in anything at all and hit this button, we'll address that in a later video. Oh, nope. It actually. Must have been just something. I'm gonna refresh the page one more time. So if they have not entered in anything at all and they try and hit this button, we just say that that shows up. Okay, so uh, the only thing left for us to do is create another page where someone could cancel their subscription and then basically, you know, your users will be able to self-service all of their subscription needs and anything that they need to do uh, within your app. In this video, let's turn our attention to canceling subscriptions now that we've got it all set up to take subscriptions. Real quickly on the subscription page, just go ahead and make sure that this uh, apply max width when stretched is checked. Uh, do that for these ones as well. I think actually 200 on these ones. And then last, just a small thing here, change this to 40. And that kind of keeps the height of all these the same. So just some good UI best practices there. And then to start off for our pay, um, this you know canceling subscription process, we're gonna wanna create a page. And so that's what I'm doing from the top left, just going to create page. And I'm gonna call this mobile subscription and then MGMT for management. And I'm gonna clone it from this mobile payments, um, which is really nice because we're still gonna be working in the world where it's important to note this uh, UID on the end of our URL here that um, 
Okay, so I'm in this mobile subscription management. I can go over to the workflow and I can see that this set state thing carried over from the other one. Now, a lot of these, I won't need that, won't need this. Um, so let's see, there's a close button here. Maybe we'll use that, I don't know. But basically, let's go ahead and start uh, deleting these form fields. We won't need any of that. Uh, what will we need? Let's see, let's go with, um, let's see. Let's go ahead and grab all of this and just bring it up to right about here. If I misclick on one of these, then it all goes badly. What looks like, is today a lucky day? Nope. So 81. So everything just needs to be moused up one. And then this one will just drag and it should lock in. Let's go ahead and make sure to center these. Now that we've repositioned them, uh, sometimes that can yep, be off by a little bit and that will break, not break, but just uh, it can, you know, uh, make it so that the responsive engine isn't working like you would anticipate it to. So, okay, uh, with all of these updated then, let's let's make a little bit of room for a, another button. And we're gonna copy and paste that. And so what we're gonna say here, basically this is a cancel subscription page and we're gonna allow people to cancel their subscription let me go ahead and grab this uh, gray color. But we're gonna kind of do something like, uh, let's see, cancel, subscription, and then we'll say here, keep subscription. If we're gonna give them the option to cancel, we'll have them think twice is the point I wanna make. So this one starts off at 240, goes to 280, this should go to 300 then, okay. And that lo that's looking good. So basically, uh, Maybe we'll say subscription portal. Nah, details is fine. Okay, so receipt email. And let's go ahead and this is, this is gonna be group subscription management. And all right, so we've got basically the rough look of what a page will look like when somebody loads up the subscription management uh, from a link from the library, which we'll create in the following video. But basically we want a few things to happen here. And let's talk about those and let's make those happen. What we want to have happen, let's see, here's a failed payment. We don't want that. How about this payment processing? We'll say, uh, cancellation processing and then we'll recenter that here and we'll call this a group no group cancellation group cancel processing and then let's go ahead let's see what we got here a failed payment um, let's let's call this one group confirm cancellation because what we want to have happen is when someone hits uh, this button to cancel it we don't want to cancel right away we actually want to um, show them a pop-up to like confirm that this is the action they mean to do and so what we're going to do is for this we'll say Confirm, cancellation, and then we'll make yeah, two buttons here. And this one will say cancel subscription. So let's go ahead and make this like 140 perhaps, or 150. And then we'll do the same here. That looks, what well, we got 16 there and 17 there, that looks good. And then we're going to give this one that same orange color that we use on all of our other stuff. And then we'll say keep subscription. 
So, you know, we're doing kind of the things that uh, visually indicate or, or visually um, encourage someone to stay with their subscription and not cancel it. But obviously, um, that's just kind of normal practice for how to run the user interface of these types of uh, decision trees for, uh, yeah, for, for what users experience here. So when they hit cancel the subscription then, what we want to have happen, let's go ahead and when keep subscription. We don't want anything there when, all right, these might be mislabeled. So this is keep subscription, button cancel subscription, nope. Uh, one of these might be in, you know, I'm just going to delete these and start from scratch. Okay, so if they want to keep the subscription, actually we haven't dealt with that case yet. Let's copy and paste this. Group keep subscription confirm. And we will back this into place and center it horizontally. And then we'll say something along the lines of, uh, let me just grab a piece of text here. And we'll want to have happen. If this is confusing, don't worry. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting somewhere with all of this. Um, Where did that extra piece of text go? Here it is. And group keep conscription confirmation. Okay, cool. There we go. We can see that it turned red, so we're inside of here. And now if I navigate to here, I've got some text copy and pasted that I'm going to paste into here. So your subscription remains intact. And I'll just bring this up so that, um, I don't know, should we go like 1.2, 1.3? Or can we, yes, okay, that's what I want. I'll just say back. And then we'll say, uh, subscription confirmed. Or whatever, you know, obviously feel free to edit any of this text. I'm just kind of going off what is uh, popping in off, off the top of my head for what it might say here. And I feel like this one should be centered because that looks very nice. 23 pixels there, 27, 25, 25. Okay, so subscription confirmed. So now let's go back to our story on this main panel. If they keep a subscription, I'm gonna do this one because it's the easiest one, and then we'll go down the other one. So uh, start edit workflow. What do we wanna have happen? We just want to show that thing we just created with that extra text and took a moment of just, you know, subscription. So when they click this keep subscription, you could say, you could say like, yay, or whatever, you know, um, some kind of celebratory <laughs> thing. Your subscription remains intact. Navigate back to the app where you'll have, let's say done. because I don't want it to be confused with navigating back with that as a back button. So, okay. Now, next up, cancel subscription on here on the main page. When this is pressed, what do we want to have happen? Let's first off show this kind of like uh, group confirm, cancel subscription. So that's all it's gonna do, it's just gonna show the pop-up. And then when that pop-up shows, uh, if they wanna keep their subscription, we're just going to go ahead and hide the this group uh, confirm cancellation. But if they go ahead and they decide to cancel their subscription off of, you know, after clicking it once and then, you know, confirming now that they really want to do this, what should we have happen? Well, let's go ahead and show this processing one. So we've got a cancel processing, so cancellation processing. That's step one. And then let's start off with our actions here. And I'm gonna do a search for cancel. So here you can see, I'll find this one that looks just like this, stripe.js subscription cancel. 
and that's what we want to do. We want to cancel. Well, what do we want to cancel? We got to go and we got to find our user who's going to cancel it. And again, we've got that nice uh, user ID stored here in our URL when we pass it to the, here so we can know that we have found this user it's a list of one that it returns so we say first item and then we go and we get the stripe subscription ID out of here prorate and we're just gonna say no uh, I wouldn't recommend trying to say yes you know like oh here's eight dollars back or whatever just if someone cancels they can uh, enjoy the benefits of their subscription up through the end of the date because that seems to make the most sense and it's you know um, a kind of a standard thing like if you were to unsubscribe from any any app in the app store these days seems like it, it works that way so all right so that would be that uh, next up we would want to do a little bit of a hide on this uh, main management area group and then we would want to um, also make sure to hide our this cancellation one and then we'll go ahead here and we'll just take a moment to do a step with this where we will make changes so uh, data make changes to a thing the thing we're going to change is a, is not uh, not the current user we're going to do a search for a user to change and again uh, grab the unique ID this same filtering mechanism where the unique ID will equal the user ID from here and the thing changed the first item of it well, what do we want to change about this person well we're going to change the paint subscription to no so you know they might actually stop paying you in stripe but if we don't update it in our system we're not going to know that um, you know they should no longer receive access to our stuff because they've stopped paying okay uh, after that one we are going to do we're going to go to navigation add a pause before the next action and change this one to a 20 this is a 20 second pause. Why this pause? Uh, you know, when we send this out to go to Stripe and say, hey, cancel this, Stripe's just gonna kinda go off and do their own thing and then cancel it, and we actually don't get an answer back. So this 20 seconds just ensures that there's enough time, and if somebody, you know, uh, is wanting to cancel and, and just confirm it visually, they'll, they'll kinda hang out, so just be like, well, it's taking a little longer than normal. We're really not trying to do anything that uh, is, a, is a poor user experience here, but we wanna give enough time for the thing to, to do what it needs to do. So uh, let's see, we've we've hit that one, we've hit the, that group. Now this whole processing thing has been spinning this whole time. We are going to do an element actions and we're gonna hide the processing one. And then last but not least, we're going to show the uh, group. Let's see, we have payment success. We haven't updated this. We haven't touched this since we've duplicated it. So I'm gonna say the sort of success uh, so this is going to be group subscription successfully canceled. And then what are we going to say here? We're going to say this. Thanks for subscribing with us. It was great to have you. We loved having you, yada, yada. Um, please come back anytime you would like type of thing. Uh, and then we also inform the, the person that their, their access remains until the final end of their date. Uh, successfully canceled. Okay, so that's it. So that has us set up with the whole flow. Let's, uh, in, in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna test it, and then we're also going to build the link from the profile to this page, which is the final step to um, finish up all of our payments work here in this course. See you in the next video. With this page set up, for canceling subscriptions. Let's go ahead and test it out, and then we'll also get the link over from the uh, profile page where someone could come to manage their subscription and come to this page should they decide to uh, wanna change anything about their subscription, cancel or, or, or keep. So let's dive into the process here for testing it. What we wanna do actually is we want to, here on our mobile subscription management page, Go into the workflow quick. So when a subscription is canceled, that is, let's see, this step, step number two. Now we search for the subscription ID out of the database 
And if you recall in our last video, we had these two subscriptions set up here. Now, uh, the reason why I'm pointing this out is because the one that's in our database is this subscription ID, this uh, HDF, if we look here for this user, HDF, HDVF, subscription ID. Um, okay, but that other one, let's go ahead and see if we can't cancel that as well and just show off uh, that our testing. So over here on more, subscriptions, show off that our testing is working. So I'm actually going to copy this one from the one that is not in our database and then I am going to paste it here. No, nope, clear that. Copy the clipboard and then paste that. Okay. And then I'm going to reload this. And now I am going to cancel the subscription. Cancel confirm confirmation. Yes, I'd like to cancel it. Okay, and we can see actually that this confirmation thing should be hidden sooner. But here is this uh, processor. And then the top one is actually the real progress of like the actual system working on its stuff. Uh, and then again, we have that 20 second pause, which is just giving the system enough time to go and do all the necessary things that it needs to do. Now, uh, okay, it looks like it successfully canceled here. And so if we click the back button here, all right, we can see that that subscription was deleted. Uh, so here we have, now it's under our canceled area, this cancel one. And if we look at our customers, I believe it was this, no, maybe it's this customer, is our customer ID. Um, uh, you know what, we, uh, we actually are using a customer ID of the second one and we canceled a subscription from the uh, first one. But, but what I wanted to show off there really was just that uh, we could successfully do something inside of the Stripe dashboard. So if I click back on this workflow, we can see now with our search for users, we're actually gonna go in and get that database value. So let's do that. And if we navigate over here to subscriptions, we should see this trial one get moved to cancel. So if someone uh, clicks out of your, or their, uh, within your app, they click out of their profile page to the link that says manage subscriptions, and they say cancel, and they say yes, I wanna cancel it. Then over here in Stripe, if we reload, we can see, even though the system here is still doing its thing um, because of the pause, we can see that over in Stripe, we actually did get that next one canceled by referring to that different ID. And then so, okay, it takes us here, great. And then now if we want to, I'm just gonna reload this page, keep subscription, again, that's all it does. Uh, so it looks like that button for this keep subscription, when we click done here, we need to add an action to hide the keep subscription confirmed. And then when this button cancellation, we show this one that's processing, we cancel the subscription, we hide, I think we wanna hide this one right away. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one last test here it's just always good to see the different scenarios of what your setup could be. So cancel subscription, and then we can see it changes right away. There actually is no subscription to cancel this time because it's already been canceled. It's referring to this. This is the ID that we have in the database. It is already canceled. Uh, it, it's not, it's not going to be smart enough to come back and tell us, hey, it's already canceled. But in a way, it's like it, not, it's not, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's move on. Yeah, we'll let this page yeah kind of do its finish off its thing and let's go back over to our mobile app here to our last item of what we need to do on the profile page so click into there no actually it is in the profile settings is where we're going to place this and let's see for these each of these items we have let's just look at our spacing here um, height of 20 and then 20 in between so that means we should take this down by 40 so take that down to 500. Oh. Let's do this one first. Take this, this one down to 540. 
and this one down to 540. Get in touch, down to 500. And then now we can copy and paste one of these here. Get that to snap into place. Same with this. And then we'll clear this out and we will add in this social icon for dollars. And then we're going to change this to, um, so we'll add a conditional here, but to start out with, well, we want this to say, this is the text for subscription management. So we'll say here, manage, uh, let's see, if they are already subscribed, we'll say manage subscription. If they are not subscribed, so here's what we'll do. We'll go over here and we'll say, when the current user's paid subscription is yes, then the text is, and then we'll uh, just grab this copy expression. And when it's no, then the text will say what? Okay, so let's think. Uh, we want the text, with, if they're not subscribed, to say, uh, get full access to all classes. And what would that look like? Okay, it's not too long. And then manage, manage your subscription here. And probably good without the here, it's clear. And that would look like this. Okay, so let's go and preview this page. And then when this is clicked, what we want to have happen is, actually, I'm going to click back one second so I can grab this link. Okay. And we're going to have a thing here like we did before where we are going to take this thing called BD, let's see. Uh, we don't have a plugin installed just yet. We will do that in a future video. It's thinking something different. What we want to have happen here is navigation, open an external website, and this UID we want to make dynamic for the current user's unique ID. So uh, this URL we will worry about updating that later, but for the purposes of this video, let's just get this as a test. So we are currently logged in as Yoga Test, and looks like our spacing is off by a touch. But let's check our functionality first. Get full access to all classes. Ah, and you know what? Great point to make here is that we only want to run this when the current user's um, paid subscription is yes because what this is is this this sent us to the management page but if we don't have a subscription so we're going to copy this paste it okay so we have two of these and we want to change one of them to no and then we'll want to change this from mobile subscription management to mobile payment same user id thing uh, working in the window and then let's go ahead and click back. We might as well, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And what do we have here? Between these we have 30. So between these we now have 30 as well. Okay, so that's all we needed to do. All right, so get full access to all classes. Mobile payment. Is it mobile payments? Yes. Okay. Let's just do a refresh here. Clicking here. Yes, so we're taken to the correct one with the payments. And now we'll type in our test card. 
type in first name and then we'll get full access now and then we'll check out here under our subscriptions how we just had this one created now so Jane Doe created a subscription that uh, is on a trial and then now um, what's going to happen is that they were in the app prior to this and now they would be on the web page in their like Safari or uh, Google Chrome browser perhaps on their mobile app or sorry on their mobile device uh, and then when they come back here see notice how it says manage subscription so if they click that then they're taken to this area where they can manage the script subscription if they keep it then they keep it great if they cancel it and then they actually cancel it here we'll do a, our final test where we'll go back after this cancellation and we'll see that text text update from manage subscription to uh, get full access now or whatever get full access to all classes once again so that completes like the whole process. As you can see, the person can go through, they can manage their subscriptions, they can do all the different things that they might need to do. And then back here, yes, get full access to all classes. So that's it. So um, this is how your users will get their uh, full access to the courses and everything. And then of course, here, this 14 day trial button will show up on the profile page. Uh, or you could place it on other, other parts throughout your app as well. It might make sense to uh, do it here uh, or within the flow of certain classes, but that's it for our payment stuff. The rest would just be adding calls to action, a little bit more of like marketing, uh, psychology, move someone along down the funnel to becoming a paid customer.